Hello, Smugheads, and welcome back to Smug Mode, a podcast where we talk about the British sci fi comedy classic Red Dwarf. I'm Ben Gilman, as always. I'm joined by Tom Hill. Hey. Uh, True Salmon. What's up? Dan Rudge. Hi, yes. I got the order so wrong there for some reason, but anyway, <laughs> and we're we're starting our season seven coverage today <laughs> with a uh, ticket to ride. Um, Smug Mode is now engaged. Um, Tom, would you like to take over the plot synopsis because I'm not ready? Um, sorry. Yeah. So basically, <laughs> um, the episode begins with Lister trying to explain into a camera how. They're still alive after what happened at season six. I'm going to tag. Go on, tag in. Put simply, by killing us, they killed themselves because once we were dead, it was impossible for us to become them in the future and return in, t- in time to kill ourselves in the past, oh even though it was the present. <laughs> <laughs> tag out. No, um, fair enough. <laughs> right. So basically, the so they they're kind of having to deal with some kind of space time continuum screw ups that have damaged the cargo bays and things like that yeah. and unfortunately the cargo bay one of the cargo bays where all of the curry supplies were kept has been destroyed which obviously destroys lister um so he tries to convince them that they should go back and get the time machine again so that they can go back in time and order a 100 curries and they'll all be fine uh, basically, he's shut down by everybody because Crichton says that time and causality should not be fucked with. Um, but then Crichton declares that he's going for some downtime, and Lister switches out his heads and takes out the morality chip from the other head of of Crichton. And then they say, "Oh yeah, let's go back and do it." And it's all about how they basically fuck up the timeline. Um, they stop the assassination of jfk by mistake which leads to a whole load of shit and russia winning the cold (laughs) war and a whole load of other things and basically there's a lot there's lots of things that go on in this episode but it ends up with them going into the future to meet jfk who didn't die explain to them that in their timeline him being assassinated was the best thing that could have ever happened and him coming back and being the gunman on the grassy knoll to kill himself and it's it's all quite convoluted but it's beautifully done you then also at the end discover that in fact list had worked out that they shouldn't have done any of that because he'd actually gone back in time and saved the curries before the flood and had moved them forward in time so there was actually curry was still on the ship but we will come to that <laughs> okay so i've so got something best. that hit me John? because they time travel Yes. It does feel, and this is very, uh, because this is a little crossover. So before I say it, don't jump on me. It's very Doctor Who, like the time travel aspect. Oh, all right. uh, shut up. <laughs> shut up. Hold on. JFK was assassinated in the first, on the same day that the first episode of Doctor Who oh, wow. premiered. Yeah. So Jeez, it's so just, wow. but, no, but, but it's like a very interesting crossover. It does. It's only in your head. <laughs> here's the thing also ben i mean yes okay i'll agree with you that this episode is very like doctor who but only in that doctor who spends an awful lot of its narrative working within this idea of causality within time so does anything which is really any fiction dealing with time travel true uh like one yeah. thing after another, the book about the historians who go through time and mess things up really badly. If anyone's ever read that, brilliant book. Can't remember the author. It's the same thing. I know, but the- I'm just doing, I'm making a JFK connection. You guys are such assholes sometimes. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, we get it, man. We get it. No, I was uh, it's all right. Man. Fuck all. <laughs> fuck all. You're ripping your bed. You're ripping your bed. You're overlooking the fact they saved Jeff K as well. Jeff K. <laughs> but we need we need to actually you know make sure we we get every reference in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're ribbing your bed. We give a bit of a rib. Come on, man. <laughs> so at least you know last week I said that the time travel didn't make any sense. Rewatching it this week, I do feel like the uh, it finally does make sense if you pay real close attention to what this is saying. Yeah. It does make sense. Once, once again, it's that thing that I always say about Red Dwarf. Good science fiction is based on good science fact. Yep. And they do their homework on what can and can't be done theoretically. Obviously, time travel 
hasn't yet happened. That's right. Right. possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyone who's seen Lupin knows it's about 2049 before everything really starts kicking off with time travel. But yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. No, no, no. Just being random. Um, so, yeah. Um, what does everyone think of this episode? Yeah, it wasn't the. You know what? It wasn't my favorite episode. One of my favorites. But um, I like the. <laughs> you just crying, crying, just making me laugh the whole entire episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's just I, about crying for me. That's that's the thing I love about this episode is it gave. Uh, Robert Llewellyn an opportunity to yeah. really kind of cut loose yeah. with a character that's very straight laced. <laughs> The laws of time goes reality. Who gives us, man? <laughs> oh my gosh! He's got that. He's got that, that. That tube. That device hooked to, hooked to his. Oh uh, yeah, no, no. He does. He does the microphone swing with his voice. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so, what the heck is he doing? Oh my gosh! He sounds like mixing mixing the bowls and that with. His... <laughs> It's just the horrified expressions of the, the crewmates as well that makes me laugh. Yeah, they're like, what so the heck you Just him lighting a cigarette has got me in the that, first Yeah, that was funny, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was well, otherwise, it'd be picking on the chickens, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's also after he's to... that dead guy, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Also, Crichton is a telly tubby because he does his little history lesson on his stomach like a telly tubby. That that, that yeah, that's Crichton, a... Crichton's an early telly tubby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> I gotta wonder what he got off into. He ate one of those though. I think it was probably one of the wild things wherever he found them. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! This is a show. This episode is amazing. Oh, I have a question though. So, Lister has curry every day, but what does he have on Monday? There's that great bit at the beginning between Lister and Crichton, but they leave Monday off. So I want to know what do they have on Monday if it's not curry? I'm I have a suggestion. <laughs> I have a suggestion. God. Okay. Lister takes Monday off entirely. Never mind just the curry. <laughs> <laughs> just skips Mondays. <laughs> That's entirely possible. <laughs> wait, did you, wait, when you watch when you watching it? Did you did you not hear any like sounds in the background, like any any claps or anything like that? In this episode, Did you noticed that. Which yeah, means, now, there was an all interaction. Well, no, because all wasn't. of it, that this entire series was not filmed in front of an audience. What they did was they filmed it, yeah. and then they screened it in front of an, a live audience, which is why the laughter track doesn't sound like a terrible laughter track when it is there. But yeah. they didn't do it for every episode for some weird reason. Yeah, for this one you can see it's like evident in this one that like properly. I mean, I actually, I actually quite like this episode, but it's no, I do. It's jarring that there isn't laughter. Mm, it's weird. But unlike, for, like for some reason on the DVDs I had, there's a laughter track, but on Netflix there's no laughter track. Very weird. It's, it's on some of the episodes and not on others. I don't know why. No, this yeah. episode. This episode, I can tell you for a fact, has a laughter track because I heard uh, on the DVD and without. But it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't on the Netflix. But that's my point. On the Netflix, for yeah. some reason, this episode doesn't have a laughter track, but the next episode does. Maybe someone in the audience was a paedophile and they just decided we oh can't have that audio again. Oh my god! I love the fact that why why your mind went there first. Where, yeah. where in the yeah. world do you reach that far? Where did that come from? Where did that come from? <laughs> the ideas about canned laughter and live audience laughter were in flux around this time. There was a lot of debate within media over which was better to use for an actual television audience engagement. There was a lot of stuff going on surrounding yeah. that. They didn't need to have any nonces in the audience. They had them all. <laughs> up on the I oh, no. So um, I do like the way that they try and say by having a bigger ship. They uh, it's a clever way to say they have a bigger budget. They've obviously pumped more money into this show. <laughs> yeah, true. Well, they ch they changed the way that they filmed it to be more sim to have more. Um, they digitally remastered it after filming every episode. Immediately, so that it was look, it had a a, cl a cleaner look than it had done previously. So basically, the BBC put a shitload of money into this. <laughs> they pumped some serious cash into the show. 
because obviously there was a three-year gap between that cliffhanger ending mm. and this. So people really didn't know if the show was ever coming back because usually they were doing a minimum of one a year. And then suddenly there was this massive gap. Mm. I mean, part of me half wishes that they had kind of stopped it at the end of season six. Because that would have been near perfection. Yeah. I, I've, like, I've rewatched season seven and season eight, and they're not as bad as my memory had them. Yeah. If that makes sense. I've rewatched and actually gone, you know what? They are pretty damn funny. But they're not on the same level as seasons four, five, and six. No. No, no for way. for a number of reasons. I mean, the main one being the fact that they cast a complete no nothing idiot to play Kachansky about three episodes in. But let's get there. Let's not have it overshadow what was actually a fairly good episode. Uh, yeah. I, I, I just I, want I, you I, to I'm know between saying. series seven, episode three, and series nine, I will be missing for at least <laughs> ten episodes. I'll be back in season nine, so yeah, I can't stand it. <laughs> I'll yeah. find a way to do it, but it will be with alcohol. <laughs> um, so obviously, we've done the dick jokes. Um, so is well, Egyptian wish this episode? <laughs> yeah, pods. I know. I do love hands on head, and the cat grabs his dick. Oh, yeah. Put your head on your head. What's the cool about that? Yeah. No, no, my favorite bit about that scene is the bit where they're actually talking about where Lee, Lee Harvey Oswald actually ended up shooting from <laughs> just the cat <laughs> right, leaning up against a couple of boxes. Well, in, my, in memory oh. serves you right. It was the Texas book room. <laughs> double, <laughs> double take. <laughs> Not just a double take. He plants his face into the box. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Literally, it's a face butt to the to the wooden box. Just and then just wide eyed stare. It's <laughs> <laughs> a bit when the shooter literally um jump, falls out the window when they push him out. He's like, "What's that pizza on the floor? What's that around that pizza? <laughs> that's that's not a large pizza, sir." <laughs> What do you mean that's not a large pizza? It's like seven foot across. What kind of pig are you? <laughs> oh, geez, oh, sorry, we loved it, man. Oh, one of my favourites, what, um, the humour in it was off the charts, though. There was like, tons of jokes in this episode, though. Yeah, so if anyone's not like following, this is the part where they are accidentally foiling JFK's assassination. Yes. <laughs> they then try to run away from the police by moving forwards three years into the future, where they realise that American cities have all been abandoned due to the fact that JFK has been arrested for philandering, and uh, Hoover has been instated as <clears throat> president, but he is under <laughs> mafia, mafia control. <laughs> no, mafia no. Make deals with USSR. USSR wins the power war, wins the Cold War based off of this. And America becomes a lot more ghost cities than ghost towns. Yeah. Um, then they try to uh, get that sorted out by getting Lee Harvey Oswald to fire from somewhere else, but he can't. He misses because it changes the no. He hits him, but it changes the trajectory and makes it a wound, not a fatality. Yeah, that's it. And um, so then they end up going to the incarcerated uh, JFK. Who is at in Idlewild Airport? At Idlewild Airport, which would have been renamed JFK, which is part of the plot. Yeah. And uh, he does his ask not what your country can do for you thing, and this and takes them up on the offer of him being the guy behind the grassy knoll. So JFK <laughs> got JFK from behind the grassy knoll. <laughs> yeah. It'll drive the conspiracy theories and conspiracy that's crazy. <laughs> I travel. Well, one of the things I actually like about that last scene is the fact that Crichton... I think all of them are dressed up as tramps. Three of them are dressed up as tramps, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. And you know that three tramps were arrested from behind the grassy knoll at the time. And, and um... Oh, yeah, they were, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. So it's quite a nice nod to that as well. <laughs> just, just, a, just a little aside that was like, 
Oh yeah, yeah that's quite cool. <laughs> that's a completely unnecessary nod to history there, which I quite like because no, virtually nobody's going to actually pick up on that. <laughs> when you fall back and they all start stomping the floor, that's, that's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> that killed me. I was dying. Oh my god! Oh my god! So stomping the floor. That's killing me, bro. What I don't understand about that episode is Lee Harvey Oswald is getting pulled out of a window by those four, and all he's doing is going. Ah. <laughs> ah. You think you might have shouted "fuck off" exactly. or something? <laughs> what was wrong with Lee Harvey Oswald's voice? Yeah, it was not tape. When he talk, I was like, oh, "What's going on?" That's why he was so pissed off in the first place. <laughs> oh my just god. get called Mickey Mouse all the time. Oh my god. Oh. Of course, if we're going to be telling the truth, the chances of Lee Harvey Oswald actually being the shooter in real life are fairly minimal. But hey, let's not go there because that's just conspiracy theory. Yeah, don't, yeah, yeah, don't be starting that again. Ooh. Just, yeah, just still alive. Any yeah, anyone with anyone with any thinking. taste in comedy or Dan will understand when I say back and to the left. <laughs> back and to the left. Yeah, all all those rumors about the anti Castro pigeons being seen in the bars beforehand. Yeah, saying, somebody Ooh, heard them saying coo, coo, coo. Coo. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh. Uh, is he still alive? Who? Lee Harvey Oswald? No, he was assassinated. Yeah. He was murdered later that day, because that, which is one, one of the reasons why they think it never got, went to court because it would he would have been able to prove that there was no fucking way he could have done it. So they, oh. he, was take, he was quite carefully taken out before he could ever testify. <laughs> it's a shame he wasn't around last year to take Donald Trump out. I would have loved it's to see also, that. Also, like, also, that is a nod to what the police say when they turn up in the book repository and they're suddenly like, we're arresting you for killing Lee Harvey Oswald, who would have saved the president from being shot. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> they're making these references as well. Of course, that is technically a gaffe because the FBI weren't actually there on the day they showed up hours later but that's that's an aside <laughs> well no because there was no particular reason for the fbi to be no i have to be there in no. Dallas. Yeah. the no. secret service yeah fbi no <laughs> see, I ain't never, the fbi was somewhere else that's a damn sure yeah yeah behind <laughs> Although the grassy knoll <laughs> yeah. behind the grassy knoll i think we've quite clearly established that jfk was behind the grassy knoll here dan yeah yeah, yeah, so yeah. To the fbi though Come on, Dan. <laughs> oh. oh my god, I know. Oh, well, you know, this episode was a good episode, man. I just read that. One of, my, one of my favorites, but it was a good episode. I, I think it's actually a really solid start to season seven. I, I, I think it's like the only jarring thing is the lack of a laughter track. Y you know what I want? Hmm. I wish this was uh, a feature length special. You know, yes. you know what? That could have worked for this. It could have it could have yeah. done with so much more detail, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They had to, they had to rush through too many things. It felt rushed to me a little bit, yeah. Yeah. But it, I still it, think it kept it's kept up that breakneck pace. It kept good. It was good. It's a great episode. It would have been ten times better as a feature episode. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And you've got no dispute from me on that. Also, isn't this series like nine episodes long? Mm -hmm. So this could have been done as a feature before you then did season seven, technically. Like, you could have done it as a stopgap and, and it would have then meant that you only had an eight-episode season, which would feel slightly less long and kind of drawn out. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah, true. Could have done that like a stopgap, yeah. Also, I mean... This whole series had, there were big issues with it because obviously um, Grant Naylor Productions had stopped working by this point. They'd split up. Mm. So that was gun That was already causing a bit of a problem. Then you had on top of that that Chris Barry had decided he didn't want to do the show anymore and wanted to leave. But he signed on to do four episodes of this season, which is why he appears in it at all, but he agreed to do an absolute maximum of four, but they wrote him off in obviously the next episode from this one and then brought him back as one of my, f See, this thing, season seven is a real mixture for me because one of my absolute favorite memories of red dwarf is in season seven. Wow. It's the, mun the munchkins. 
You know, the rim, 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 the uh, Rimmer experience. Oh, yeah. That is one of my favourite scenes ever in Red Dwarf. But it's in a series that annoys the living piss out of me for so many reasons. <laughs> I remember mean, experience. Oh, when we get there, woo! But yeah, when we get there. I genuinely am thinking of writing to... Grant Naylor Productions and begging them to let us use the Munchkin song to as our outro oh on God. that episode. <laughs> oh. Absolutely. Right. So next week's better though. So that'll be the best next, thing. Next, right. So next week. Yeah, next week's good. Although next. I have issues. Oh, with yes. Bring up no. Time. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I have issues right. with it, but they are not we'll surmountable. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Tom, do you think it's because the subspace conduits have blocked with the transponder calibrations and caused a major tachyon surge that's overloaded the time matrix? I think we just need to change the batteries. Oh, I think I've been jabbing it too much. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you too much. You too much. You too too much. You too much. You You too much. Hey, should we wrap it up then, lads? Sorry, what was that? Should we wrap it up then and come back for next week? Yeah. I'm sorry. Wrap it up. Why the hell right. not? Okay, so it's goodbye for me. Bye from me. Bye for me. Just call me badass. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one more week to the bitch called Kuchansky. All right, smug off you, smugheads. <laughs>